My daughter has decided to hold me entirely accountable for her dad's bad behaviour and I need advice. Hello everyone, this is your daily dose of mugginess. I've been a counsellor for over 20 years and I specialise in personality disorders. I'll be pointing out red flags and speculating on what personality disorder the OP might be dealing with. Dear Agnes, my husband is not a violent man and would never raise a hand to me or our daughter Kate but he does have a filthy temper that has caused issues over the years. For example, he blew up when Kate got a boyfriend aged 14, yelling and calling her names, and then years later when he found out she had a boyfriend who she kept secret aged 17. He was so angry at the secret keeping that he broke her laptop and said she'd have to use the computers at school for work. I want to be clear that he apologised profusely for both these incidents and others like it and that Kate has her share of responsibility too. She would scream back at him, deliberately broke unreasonable reasonable rules like no underage drinking or boyfriends and generally went out of her way to antagonise him. It was a nightmare being in the house with them at each other's throats throughout her teens. I hope that since she moved out for college and got her own place that things would calm down between them. Instead, Kate refuses to speak to her dad at all and hasn't been home to visit since 2019, only in part due to the global situation. He misses her terribly and has asked what she wants from him, but she hangs up the phone if he speaks to her and won't answer emails. After years of her bluntly ending conversations with me, whenever I tried to raise speaking with her dad, she finally told me in a recent call that she blames me for her dad's emotional abuse. Not a term I agree with at all, nor one she was able to defend when I quizzed her. And that I should stop paying things like her phone and car bills for her since she thinks we should part ways. She offered to send a cheque when I bridled at the nerve of this, but I know she can't afford that. I asked what have I ever done to merit this attitude. I hardly raised my voice throughout her entire childhood and we used to be close. And she said I did nothing and that is the problem. The call ended with both of us crying. I don't know what to do. I'm terrified to tell my husband what she said as it will break his heart and I'm so angry with Kate. I don't think she's looking at things clearly at all. Her account of her childhood suggests it was Dickinson's horror story when in fact she was often spoiled, dearly loved and given countless opportunities at great expense to both her parents. Can you advise on what I could say or should do to try and heal the breach between us? Am I wrong to think her reaction is grossly disproportionate? to what, by her own account, amounts to a childhood in which her dad sometimes yelled at her. I feel lost and badly need an outside perspective. My reply. He shouted at his 14-year-old child and called her names and she shouted back. That's not somebody who has a filthy temper. It's someone who is reacting against being abused. I agree with not letting a 14-year-old date, but screaming abuse at them doesn't work as you found out when she hid her boyfriend when she was 17. When kids feel they can't trust their parents with important things, they learn to keep things everything to themselves. So when things do go wrong, they don't feel safe enough to disclose those things that could be really damaging to them, like being groomed on the internet. You and your husband are at fault here. Breaking people's belongings is abuse. Screaming at them is abuse. Name calling is abuse. You've allowed your husband to abuse your child and you did nothing to stop it. You even blamed her. Kate calling it emotional abuse, you saying it is not, doesn't change the fact that it is. And now you wonder why she doesn't want to have anything to do with either of you. You can either accept your mistakes and apologise profusely or lose your daughter for good. Perhaps counselling would help you so you can see things for how they really are, not the blinkered way you look at things.